California. The film business is trying to tell the public that anyone who buys an illegal tape is dealing with a criminal. Superman. We eventually managed to get this copy from a pirate who may or may not be raided one day. Superman. We set out to learn just how the hot film and tape market works. I, I think it's an exclusive. Edward really? said he'd been offered Superman for $1,000. Said suppliers line up maybe 30 or 40 dealers like himself, deliver copies to all of them the same day, make 30 or $40,000, and disappear until next time. They said it would happen, and it has. The day when you could go to the movies without leaving your living room. Something Hollywood was looking forward to with dollar signs in its eyes. No longer would they have to lure you to a theater. You wouldn't have to go to the movies. The movies would come to you. Well, they are coming to you. If you're ready for them, via videotape cassettes, you can play on your home television set. But if what you want is Superman, the only way you can get him is illegally, from a modern-day pirate who steals first-run films, somebody's copyrighted product. The market for pirated films is worldwide, and it's costing Hollywood millions. It's happening because it's so easy to slip a videotape recording of a film into a machine and virtually turn your living room into a theater. Grease, box office smash. But some pirate has managed to get it transferred from film to videotape. The boys from Brazil. Hollywood worries that illegal tapes of movies will cut into theater profits now and into television release later on. Heaven can wait, Warren Beatty. I'm dreaming, huh? What's at issue here is the illegal use of someone else's copyrighted material without permission or payment. For the pirate, the profits can run into the millions. We set out to learn just how the hot film and tape market works. Producer Paul Lowenwater and cameraman Bob Peterson picked one out of dozens of video showrooms they could have gone to in New York City. Adwar Video on Lower Fifth Avenue. We saw their ad in the New York Times. Lowenwater and Peterson, with our hidden camera, came to pick up copies of Grease and Star Wars, which they had ordered on a previous visit. This is the Star Wars, then, and this one is the... Uh... Grease, parts one and two. Okay, fine. Now, how are we going to pay? Do you want them on separate bills on the same bill? Cash, Mr. George? Separate. Separate. No. Okay. Do you have any luck with Superman? Not yet. My person hasn't come back yet. I'm just thoroughly amazed. Usually they say it, and then then they turn up like three or four weeks later with it in their hands. So all of a sudden they look up, and here they are. Mm -hmm. No, I haven't given up hope. It's actually a standard operation. Yeah, and that and that'd be the same forty dollars a cassette sure. thing. Sure. Yeah. You call them minute. you call them training tapes, huh? Yeah, the thing is illegal. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to look at the uh, that illegal list again I'll if I can. I'll do it for you in just one minute. Let me make a change. The illegal list grew longer each time we visited, as more current titles were added. Where do they come from? Well, from somewhere within the film industry itself. Some employee will sneak out a print overnight to be duplicated by a pirate. Even a theater projectionist lending one reel of a film to a pirate while the rest is being shown in his theater. It's almost impossible to protect a film against pirates. Technicians and stars and yes, film executives and yes, employees at television networks and stations all have access to films. Back here. Yeah. Okay. Producer Lawnwater wanted to check the quality of the tapes he had bought at Adwar Video. And he was led past the video cameras and recorders, which are the major part of the business, to the back room where the illegal copies are made. Star Wars, illegal on videotape. This copy, which we filmed later, was sold to us for $50. In its heyday, pirates were getting $500 and up. Do you have a turning point? My wife would like that. Then, not, uh, yeah, not. Yeah. 
The masters are Adwire's permanent tapes, from which copies are made for sale. No, it's not super crisp. And see, there's some wrinkles. A little rollover on it. Yeah, that's the record wrinkle. Yeah. Well, did you get it on cassette, or do you get it on film? No, no we got it on cassette. If we were on film, it'd be better than that. Yeah. Well, let's see. 2001, Towering Inferno. This little library does not belong to pirates, but it used to. It's now in the hands of the FBI. This is Homer Hap Porter, who runs the FBI's anti-piracy squad in Los Angeles. Star Wars. Where would this have come from? We obtained that during a raid that was a little over two weeks after Star Wars had been released to the public. You certainly got the titles. We have most of the major titles that have been produced within the last 10 to 15 years. Piracy as it is now and as it could be in the future is a cancer in the belly of the film business. Jack Valenti is head of the Motion Picture Association of America, the trade group of the major film studios. Mr. Valenti, have you got a guess as to how much piracy costs the film and tape industry? Uh, it is difficult to measure precisely because one never knows how much business you're losing. Estimates range from a hundred million up. But the point is that it is there, it is rampant, and unless we can get a hold of it uh, alongside the police forces of the world, uh, it can uh, cause serious injury to the body and soul of the movie business. Hollywood sees every new video recorder as a threat to its pocketbook. Thousands of potential customers flocked to this first national home video show in Los Angeles a few months back. Every machine can copy. Every copy means dollars lost in royalties not paid and tickets not sold. Several movie companies are trying to thwart the pirates by selling some films on tape legitimately. But right under Hollywood's eyes, here was Battlestar Galactica, recorded illegally off the air by somebody, being shown as a come on by distributors of big screen television sets. Galactica was filmed for ABC television by Universal Pictures, which told us it has not given anyone the right to record it on video cassette. But you or I could do it, using the new technology that is running away with the law. Here we are with more than a million new videotape recorders expected to be in American homes by the end of the year and a copyright law that says that taping off the air is technically a violation. And Sony, who makes recorders, has now been taken to court by Universal Pictures and Disney Studios who contend that the very existence of this machine is what makes copyright violation possible. They would like the machines limited to playback only, no recording. Sony contends that Congress knew about home recording when it wrote the new copyright law and never intended that home recording should be prosecuted. That case will take months, and the decision will ultimately affect us all. Meantime, the FBI tells us that it is not about to spend money prosecuting individuals recording for their own use at home. But when a dollar changes hands, they want to know about it. But in the beginning, as they say, there was just film, and then there were film collectors and pretty soon there were film pirates to feed the film collectors. Tom Danahoo owns Thunderbird Films in Los Angeles, selling legitimately to collectors now. But Danahoo used to be a pirate. What did you uh, get charged with? What was the uh, major work of art that brought the major you? Major work of art <laughs> that I got uh, charged with, and actually, uh, we, we can joke, it's uh, a beach blanket bingo with uh, <laughs> Annette Fenicello. Hey, which, you know, one of the beach films, uh, rock films, whatever at the time was, uh, and evidently, some people still want it, and, uh, and that's what I got charged with. But what they didn't get at that time was maybe a hundred or two hundred negatives. Well, I didn't. Well, I didn't keep them there. They didn't even know about it. Uh, they didn't do a very good uh, investigative job. I could teach them a few things if they wanted to put me on payroll. <laughs> <laughs> From that on, you went straight. From that on, I went straight. Hey, I gave them all my negatives. Every negative uh, that I that I had that was. Uh, uh, not uh, quite legit to have, I gave it to them. And then I continued in the business of finding things that are in public domain. What kind of contacts would you need if you decided to go into the pirating business again? I've been offered uh, film by uh, thieves that work at uh, different laboratories, projectionists, film collectors that know film collectors that know projectionists. Uh, a lot of things get thrown away in the trash cans and hey, there's not a trash can out there around town that doesn't have a film collector lurking under it. <laughs>